the 10th uh, scoring defense in the league, and you're walking down the hall and you're bumping to Robert Sala. <laughs> what were you thinking, or, or you know, what what did you think about that? That he was all of a sudden on your side. Well, I, I've talked to Robert probably every week for I don't know the last 12 weeks. So this wasn't. I mean, Robert's one of my best friends in this profession. So he's a guy that obviously I coached with in San Francisco. And then I left to go to Ohio State and we stayed in touch. Um, probably talked before most games. And then when I got the head job, same thing. And when I got here and starting the season, I mean, he's a good friend. We've talked a lot. So I didn't just bump into him down the hall. I knew he was coming when he was coming. And um, it's been great to have him here. You know, obviously, you know, kind of disappointing to what happened uh, to him with the Jets. I think he's a great coach, and I thought he could have done a great job with that team this year. Um, like I said, he's a great friend of mine and a great coach, so there was no bumping into him. With all of that said, will you go out and get his opinion on things with your defense, or is there a clear line against that? Well, there, there's been a line since he's been here. He's been with the offense, but, I mean, like I said, he's my friend, so... We've talked all the time, whether it was me asking questions, him asking questions, us, you know, giving our thoughts in the off season together. Um, I mean, ultimately, you guys know me by now. I have one thing that is important to me, and that's winning. So if you got a good blitz idea and you think it will work, let me know it. And if it fits in, maybe we'll run it. Um, no, but it, it's been, you know, a lot of friendly communication and catching up and, you know, making sure he's doing OK. And but right now, I mean, Stenna would have a better view of, of what he's added because he's been in with the offense. I asked Matt this yesterday and he said absolutely that if it was if it was a different circumstance where it wasn't a defensive coordinator who is good friends with Robert and has history with him, maybe this would be something that he might not have done because he, he likes what the defense has going on. So how important is it that you have that history with him? I mean, I'm at the point in my career where I'm pretty secure and confident in what we're doing, um, where we're heading, the staff that we have on defense. So whether it was a really good friend of mine like it is or some guy that I really don't know, I, I just, I mean, I just think that's a way bigger thought and a story than it actually is. Um, I came here to win. Um, I believe in our system. I believe we're getting better. I believe in our staff. I believe in our players. Um, I, we've gotten better each week and I think we'll continue to get better. Um, I'm just, I'm not the type of guy that worries about that stuff. I've been a head coach. I've been a coordinator. I want to win football games and I want to win a championship. And I'm not going to have anything distract me to do such. So if three other guys came in and I didn't know them, I mean, let's just get ready for the game and go play and do the best we can. So I just, I don't know. I don't think it's a story, you know? I got a great relationship with our defensive staff and a great relationship with the head coach, a great relationship with the players, and let's go. Maybe, maybe this is a story then. Um, what, Tyler, I'll try to give you a story if you can. I'm just telling, I mean. No, I'm good. It's good. I'm, I was talking to Kenny earlier, a bunch of us were, and I'm intrigued by the idea of how much is a defensive coordinator willing to listen to his players and not just do whatever they want, but take their ideas, truly take them under advisement, consider whether or not they're worth including in game plans. And it sounds to me like that is a part of your approach that the guys really respect. Yeah, but isn't, isn't, that, isn't that going back to everything I just said? Like, like, to me, this is not about me. Like, I'm the defensive coordinator, I call the defense, but it's way bigger than me. Like, this is a player's game. We have a whole defensive staff. We have a whole support staff. Like, I'm just, I'm not, like, I don't think I have all the answers because I don't. And I don't think I'm the smartest guy in the room because I'm not. And I've learned a lot from being a head coach and being a coordinator in the past. And if a really good player like Kenny, like, if I go to him and say, hey, we're going to run such and such game on third down, and I want you to do this, and I want your aiming point to be this, and do you think you can succeed at a high level doing that? Like, let's practice it. And if he says to me, no, would you, why would I run it? You know, that doesn't make sense to me. And then at the end of the week, I put up the third down inventory that we've run, and I look closely at what worked, and we try to get creative, and we're trying to build as we go. But it's, 
hey, what do you feel most comfortable running? Because if he feels comfortable, don't you think the success rate's going to be higher? And I'll say, is there any that you guys don't feel comfortable with? Tell me now. And we'll either practice it more or I won't run it. And what you're starting to see now, like even at practice today, there's this confidence and this energy. Like today was our best Thursday practice we've had. Like, and that's not coach speak. It's not going to BS you guys. It was. The energy was there. The execution was there. Guys are taking ownership because they're running stuff that they believe and they are good at and they're getting confident in it. Right? And it's like I talk to X all the time. Like, even I'll get on the headsets and we'll have conversations and it's, you feel this, can I show down here and do this? Yeah, if you got a good feeling to beat on it, yeah. Now, there's sometimes I have to say no because it's like, whoa, that doesn't fit in with what we're doing and we might give up a big play. So I got to, I, it's not just like, hey, what do we want to do? Go do it. It's like me listening, observing, and then making a final decision on what we can do best to win the football game. I get it 100%. I've done this long enough to know that not every coach does that. Yeah, yeah I go. You, you've coached long enough to know that not every coach does that. I think it goes back to I'm here for one reason and one reason only. We're a top 10 defense in scoring. Awesome. That means we're, we're, we're winning. Right? It's not, well, look at that. I don't care. That's, and I think that's why I'm in a good point in my career right now. Um, and it's like the staff. Like, I'll give you a great example, because this is, this is why I love our defensive staff. So Sean Duggan sits next to me in the booth, right? So it's me, him, um, and we're constantly going through the iPad. He sat next to me when I was the defensive coordinator at Ohio State. He was with me at BC. We kind of like, he's starting to think alike, right? So he's looking through the pictures, and he looked at one set. And he's like, coach, you see how far, you know, I don't want to get too detailed. You see how far this guy's doing this? I think if we do this and this, we'll get him. So we, click, we quickly figured out how to get that done. We got it, and we sacked him on that play. Like, that was Sean Duggan coming up with that idea. Like, call him whatever position you want. And it wasn't like, no, I'm not running. No, it was like, yeah, that's a damn good idea. And it fits what we do. And we were able to figure out how to communicate to the players. And we got like a seven-yard loss on a sack for it. So, like, I just, we're going to keep working together so we can win. Wilson hadn't played middle linebacker in a game for you guys last, right. last year or this year. What made you go with him, and what do you think he gave you? What made us go with him was veteran guy, communication, green dot, you know, loud crowd. Um, He's been through games before. He's worn the green dot in the past, so the experience of doing that. Um, he's a guy in practice that when we put him in, I do communicate with when Quay's out, so I felt comfortable doing that. And he knows what he's doing. We can trust him. Like, he's the ultimate guy that we trust. Um, and I thought he did an awesome job. Not easy. I mean, really not easy. And it's not just the production that he had, the leadership, the communication, getting guys lined up. Um, it was really cool to see. Do you want to figure a way to get him maybe into that spot in, in some of your packages more? You've got four linebackers. A lot of times there's only two of them out there on the field. Do you want to keep mixing those packages up, or does that dilute practice stuff too much? No, I don't keep mixing it up. I think based on you know what they're going to come out in and how we match them up, I mean, he deserves to have a role just like he has. Um, you know, last week they were in a lot of 12 personnel, so they had big people on the field. So he was going to play more regardless. But he's certainly a guy that can do a lot of different things. And I, again, I think you saw us take one more step in creativity last week, and I think you'll continue to see it build the more our guys know and understand. And that's where we're starting to get to. Uh, Press Taylor was really complimentary today about just what you guys have done on the defensive line, just the amount of rotation. I think he even said it was like it's every play, it seems like there's a new wave of guys coming after it. The chicken or the egg there, is that with the depth that you have, or is that just you know, philosophically something that you've, you're preferred in terms of being able to mix that type of personnel? I mean, I think it's both. Philosophically, I think a lot of coaches would like to have fresh D linemen because the same O linemen are in for every play. And if you can just kind of overwhelm them and wear them out, I think when you get to late in the games, it's advantage to the defense because imagine your left tackle or right tackle or your guards and centers are in for 65 snaps, but your defensive ends are each played. You have four guys who have played between 28 and 45 plays. We're going to be a lot fresher at the end of the game when two minute is the most important part or it's a key third down in the game. Now, I think we're in a situation where we have a lot of guys where we can do it and we trust them because you can't just, you can't just say, uh, we're just going to rotate no matter what. You got to trust the guys, know what they're doing, and they're good enough to play. So we've been fortunate to do that. 
know if the, this and this was Xavier's sack, but he, he was saying that it has been a play that's only been in, in kind of the works the past couple weeks. I'm curious, wh where did the idea come from to bring him to the, the line of scrimmage, especially when when it, the idea came, it was in the middle of this interception streak over the deep middle, right? And then what, what, why, why was Sunday the right time to use that? Um, we've had him down on the line of scrimmage before. It's just something that we do and have various different coverages out of it. We just felt based on what I saw earlier in the game, um, out of that alignment and how they were protecting it, we felt like he would come free. So as soon as that next third down happened, that was written down and I was ready to call it. It's been two games since he's gotten his hands on a pass, which is normal for Bill, every other DB and not normal for him. How's, how's he still continue to impact the game even when it's not the, the splashy interception? Have you seen a ball thrown anywhere near him? That's a huge impact. I mean, if you go back the last two games, have you really seen the ball been thrown down the field against us? No. So I sent him a text the other night and said, don't get bored. I mean, and I mean that because he's affecting the game in so many other ways. In the run defense, he comes up and make a tackles. I have him more involved in pressures. His coverage stuff has been outstanding. But he's affected the game because they're not throwing the ball deep anymore. Like, that's affecting the game as much as anybody. Um, and then I told him that's like a sign of ultimate respect. When you've been around guys like Revis and some really good players and the ball stops going to them, I mean, just don't get bored because it's going to go up again and you got to be ready for it, and he will be. I wish I had 12 minutes for this question, but what is your halftime like? You don't, you don't get 12 minutes. Like, there's, so for there, you, you support, there's, no half, like? there's no halftime in the NFL. Like, you're adjusting after every single series, and you're just going and adjusting, and you're going and adjusting. I mean, I think it's one of the benefits that I'm actually in the booth because in between each series, I'm on the iPad, I'm taking notes. Like half the time, I wish I was watching Matt because we're throwing touchdowns and all these crazy plays that I see the next day. But it's looking at the iPad, taking notes. How can we set them up on the next third down? What do we need to do different on first and second down? How are they going to attack us? What's coming up? And it's just constant communication, right? And then all of a sudden, you're up again. I mean, by the time you get to halftime, I mean, you, we're in a golf cart. Okay, so the golf cart drops us off at the elevator. We sprint more than I sprint all week because then I got to sprint in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, you might have to use the bathroom because it's been a long half, so there goes another period of time. I mean, I hate to get this descriptive. Then you're meeting with your – you're sitting in a room talking to the coaches who you've been on the headsets talking to the whole game, and then I go up, I draw some stuff on the board, give them one message, and bang, you're up. It's the fastest thing in the world. But there is no, like – we got down to halftime and we – there, that's the whole entire game. Like that's what you're doing in between every single series. So I hope that answers your question. Halftime is just, I mean, it's, I get a good workout in halftime running up and down. I mean, seriously, it keeps my blood flowing and changes scenery. So you get two or three minutes with the players, is that really all you get, you think? Maximum. Yeah, it's crazy. Like uh, the first preseason game, college halftime is longer. So the first preseason game, I was like really getting detailed with the staff and just trying to get in there. They're like, Coach, we got to go back up. I was like, I didn't even see the players yet, <laughs> you know? So it's fast, like really fast. Dumb question. So on these uh, replacement fire zones, is, which is obviously what Matt told us they were called, do you guys still consider those a blitz even when you just rush four on those? Do you consider them a blitz? I don't know. I, I don't know football as well as you do. That's what I'm asking. What should I consider them? We're only rushing four. So they're really not a blitz. Okay. It might look like a blitz. So what did you call them? Yeah, I call them like um, simulated pressures. So what is that? So technically I'm using the word pressure, so maybe that it is a pressure. But we're simulating. We're making it look like a pressure, but it's not a pressure. So that's essentially all we're doing. We're sending four with one unconventional player, but we're only rushing four, right? So technically, we're not pressuring, we're simulating pressure. That's not a dumb question, though, because, I mean, I get that a lot. What do you think the effectiveness of those kinds of rushes are for you guys? When, like the McKinney one, I think you had one with Cooper in the Rams game. Um, in some games, they're very successful. In other games, you're, all right, I mean, I can, get you, I can get into pretty good detail with you here, but sometimes you're running those for other reasons. You're running them to keep a running back in protection. Right, So he blocks that guy, he's supposed to blitz, so then what happens, they don't get the running back out on a route. right? So now you're covering less people. Or, man, we can keep the tight end and the running back in by only rushing four, now we can cover less people. 
it's great when you get like a free runner and it works like that. I mean, we wish we could do that all the time, but that's not always going to happen when you're just rushing four. So there's some games you might see him. There's some games you might not see him. Um, it just depends. It just depends on how we feel we have to attack somebody. Does that make sense? So what is it, Jeff, if your guy engages, you know, the fifth guy engages and then he drops out, you know, engages with the lineman for a second? It's still a simulated pressure because we're only bringing four. Yeah, anytime we bring over, I mean, there's five-man pressures, which a lot of times are fire zones, right? And then there's six-man pressures, which a lot of times are man pressures. And then your zero pressures, you're bringing everybody but covering your four eligible, so you're bringing seven or eight. Does that make sense? Yeah. So think about it like numbers. If we're really, if we're in a four down front and we're only rushing four, we're not really pressuring. We could be simulating, but we're rushing four. A lot of times when you see five, a lot of that people will run like three under three deep. And anytime you start ramping it up, you got to start playing more man. Most of these analysis things, you know, say if you're rushing five, that's a blitz, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I'm not, no disrespect to any of those. That's just how my mind works. Yeah. But I'm wondering if, you know, sometimes you do have that guy go and engage, and he's actually taken up a blocker, but then he pulls out, you know? So or maybe, he's just, maybe he's just wrong. <laughs> 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 uh, let me know who you see doing it, and I'll tell you if he's right or wrong. How about that one? 